Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Thursday, January 28th, 2021. Today, I'm going to recap yesterday's college basketball, NBA, and NHL games and look ahead to tonight's games in each slate of sports. My NHL power rankings for the week. The Texans finally hire a new coach. We'll recap the best answer from last night and my best bet of the day. We'll start in college basketball. We will go over the slate from yesterday and look ahead to today's slate. So without further ado, here we go. Pepperdine over BYU, 76-73. Merrimack over Long Island, 68-63. James Madison over Towson, 78-63. St. Francis, Pennsylvania over Fairleigh Dickinson, 90-82. Kent State over Bowling Green, 96-91. Rhode Island over LaSalle, 73-60. The Citadel over Wofford, 77-69. Number 16, Florida State over Miami, 81-59. Duquesne over Fordham, 86-82. Florida over Vanderbilt, 78-71. Number 13, Ohio State over Penn State, 83-79. Number 17, Creighton over Seton Hall, 85-81. Number 20, Virginia Tech over Notre Dame, 62-51. UNT Greensboro over Mercer, 81-68. Providence over Marquette, 72-63 in overtime. South Carolina over Georgia, 83-59. VMI over Western Carolina, 87-61. Northwestern State over New Orleans, 81-73. UCF over East Carolina, 71-64. NC State over Wake, 72-67. Nichols over McNeese, 76-69. Houston Baptist over Incarnate Words, 73-57. Sam Houston State over A&M Corpus Christi, 75-70. Abilene Christian over Stephen F. Austin, 82-62. Arkansas over Ole Miss, 74-59. Number two, Baylor over Kansas State, 107-59. Number 14, Wisconsin over Maryland, 61-55. Clemson over number 25, Louisville, 54-50. Drake over Missouri State, 78-73. St. John's over DePaul, 81-68. Colorado over Washington State, 70-58. Colorado State over Boise State, 78-56. Southeast Louisiana over Central Arkansas, 69-57. And Utah State over UNLV, 83-74. Tonight's slate is a little smaller, to say the least. Wyoming. No, wait, that game's later. So I have to move it. First up is... Oregon State against USC. My projected line is USC by 7.5, total 141.5. Meanwhile, FanDuel has this USC 11.5, total 136.5. I'm going to jump on the over at minus 108. Next up is 7 o'clock on ESPN. U. By the way, um, Oregon State USC is also on ESPN. U. So ESPN U, 7 o'clock, UNC Asheville, Winthrop. My line's Winthrop 10, total 150.5. Meanwhile, it is Winthrop 12.5, total 153.5. I'm going to take in yet another over in this one. Or I'm sorry, this is going to be an underplay. My bad. This is going to be an under. In this game, 153 and a half. I'm going to go under. Bradley Valpo, my line is Bradley five and a half, total 134 and a half. Meanwhile, it's Bradley four and a half, total 131 and a half. I'm going to jump on the over here. Next up, Michigan State Rutgers. Michigan State returning from COVID. That game's on Fox Sports 1. My line is Michigan State two and a half, total 146. There's no line out yet for this game. UTEP, UTSA. My line is UTSA by 5, total 145. Meanwhile, it's UTSA 1.5, total 146.5. I'm going to lay to 1.5 with UTSA against UTEP. Louisiana Tech, Southern Miss on CBS Sports Network. My line is Louisiana Tech by 14, total 135. Meanwhile, it's Louisiana Tech 6.5, total 131.5. I'm laying the 6.5 with Louisiana Tech at minus 118. 8 o'clock, TCO at number 15, Kansas. 
My line is Kansas 8, total 140 and a half. Meanwhile, it is Kansas 14 and a half, total 136 and a half. I hate this pick, but I'm taking TCU plus 14 and a half. Memphis SMU, my line is SMU a half, total 140 and a half. Meanwhile, this game is on ESPN 2. And it is SMU three and a half, total 142 and a half. I'm going to take Memphis plus a three and a half. They won't win, but they'll cover. North Texas and Rice. My line is North Texas 11 and a half, total 140 and a half. Meanwhile, it's 7 and a half, total 136 and a half. I am going to take North Texas minus 7 and a half at minus 104. Northern Colorado, Northern Arizona. My line is Northern Colorado 13, total 135 and a half. Meanwhile, it's Northern Colorado 4.5, total 133.5. I'm going to lay to 4.5 on Northern Colorado at minus 102. 8.30, Tennessee State, Murray State. My line is Murray State 9.5, total 137. Meanwhile, it's Murray State 10.5, total 133.5. Um, I'm going to take the over in that game. Morris State, Jacksonville State. My line is Jacksonville State by a half, total 134 and a half. Meanwhile, it's Jacksonville State, four and a half, total 129 and a half. I'm going to take the over at minus 108. Nine o'clock, number one, Gonzaga at San Diego. My line is Gonzaga, 25 and a half, total 152. Meanwhile, it is Gonzaga, 27 and a half, total 158 and a half. I'm going to take the under 158 and a half. Wyoming, San Diego State on Fox Sports 1. My line is San Diego State 9, total 143 and a half. Meanwhile, it is San Diego State 16 and a half, total 142 and a half. I am going to take Wyoming plus the 16 and a half at minus 115. SIU, Edwardsville, and Southeast Missouri State. My line is... Edwardsville by five, total 143 and a half. Meanwhile, it is Edwardsville as a two and a half point underdog, total is 140 and a half. I'm going to take Edwardsville plus a two and a half and plus 116 on the money line. Eastern Illinois and Tennessee Martin. My line is Eastern Illinois seven and a half, total 148. Meanwhile, it is Eastern Illinois seven and a half, total 148 and a half. I'm going to. Oh, that's pretty good. I have no choice but to take the under at minus 112. Next up, um, ESPNU, Belmont, Austin P. Pretty good game, actually. Um, Belmont 11 half total 148 is my projection. Meanwhile, it is Belmont 4.5 total 152.5. I'm going to take Belmont minus 4.5 at minus 114. CBS Sports Network, UAB, Middle Tennessee. My line is UAB 12 total 130. Meanwhile, it's you will be 10 and a half, total 131 and a half. Um, oof, tough call. No choice but to take, I guess, UAB minus 10 and a half and minus 108. I have a slight edge on UAB. Montana State, Montana, my line is state 2 and a half, total 133 and a half. Meanwhile, there's no lineup yet. Weber State in Idaho. My line is Weber State. 15, total 143. Meanwhile, it's Weber State 12 and a half, total 143 and a half. That delayed the 12 and a half with Weber State at minus 108. Sacramento State, Eastern Washington. My line is Eastern Washington 5 and a half, total 141 and a half. Meanwhile, it's Eastern Washington 9 and a half, total 141 and a half. I have no choice but to take Sacramento State plus 9 and a half at minus 114. 9.30, Air Force, San Jose State. My line is Air Force 3, total 141.5. Meanwhile, it is Air Force 4.5, total 143.5. Um, I'm going to take... Ooh. Two-point edge on... Yeah. I'm going to take the under at minus 112. Stanford, Arizona on ESPN 2 at 10 o'clock. My line is Arizona 3, total 145. Middle is Arizona 8.5, total 143.5. I'm taking Stanford plus 8.5 and plus, I'm sorry, at minus 115. Arizona will win, but Stanford will cover. 11 o'clock, Fox Sports 1, Cal, Arizona State. My line is Arizona State by 9.5, total 145. 
Meanwhile, it's Arizona State, eight and a half total, one forty four and a half. I have no choice but to lay the eight and a half at Arizona State at minus one hundred four. And last but not least, on CBS Sports Network, New Mexico and Fresno. My line is Fresno seven total, one thirty five. Meanwhile, it's Fresno six and a half total, one thirty one and a half. I have no choice but to take the over one thirty one and a half. Already, that's it for college basketball for today. Now we'll move on to the NBA. We'll go over yesterday's big window and look ahead to a slower slate tonight. Pacers over to Hornets, 116-106. Pacers 11-7. Charlotte 7-11. Doug Dermott had 28 to lead Indiana. By the way, Devonta Sabonis had a triple-double. 28 points. Or I'm sorry, 22 points, 11 boards, 10 assists. Terry Rogier had 20 for Charlotte. Cavs over to Pistons, 122-107. Cavs 9-9, Detroit 4-14. Four Colin Sexton had 29 points to lead the Cavaliers. Jeremy Grant had 26 for Detroit. Kings over to Magic, 121-107. Kings 7-10, Orlando 8-11. Buddy Heel had 29. Nikola Vucevic had 26. Nets over to Hawks, 132-128. In overtime, the Nets 12-8, Atlanta 9-9. Kevin Durant had 32 points. Trey Young, 28 with 14 dishes. Nuggets over to Heat, 109-82. Denver, 11-7. They are winners of five in a row. Miami, 6-11. Nikola Jokic had 21 points and 11 boards. Kendrick Nunn had 17 to lead Miami. 76ers over to Lakers, 107-106. This was a great game. Lakers looked like they were going to win the game. They are on a 13-0 run and took the lead. And then Tobias Harris is the go-ahead shot with about two seconds left. Lakers dropped the 14 and 5. Philly with their best win of the year goes to 13 and 6. Joel Embiid at 28 points. And Ben Simmons had a triple double, 17, 11, and 10. Meanwhile, LeBron James, 34 points and 6 assists. Bucks over to Raptors, 115, 108. Bucks 11 and 6. Toronto 7 11. Giannis had 24 with 18 boards and 9 assists. Norman Powell led the Raptors in scoring with 26. Spurs over to Celtics, 110-106. The Spurs are 10-8. Boston's 10-7. DeMar DeRozan had 21 points and 7 assists. Jason Tatum, 25 points and 5 assists. Pelicans over to Wizards, 124-106. Pelicans 6-10. Washington, 3-11. Brandon Ingram had 32 points and 8 assists. Bradley Beal had 47 with 6 assists. Thunder over to Suns, 102-97. OKC, 8-9. Phoenix, 8-8. Um, Al Horford, 21 points and 11 boards. Chris Paul at 32 with 5 assists for okay, for I mean for the Suns. Jazz over the Mavericks, 116-104. The Jazz with their 10th win in a row. 14-4 and on the year. Dallas, 8-10. and Jordan Clarkson led the Jazz in scoring with 31 points. Luka Doncic had 30 with 6 assists. Warriors over the Timberwolves, 123-111. Golden State 10 and 8, Minnesota 4 and 13. James Weissman led the Warriors in scoring. This was his um breakout game. Coming off the bench, 25 points for Golden State. Malik Beasley at 25 for Golden State. Only four games tonight. 730 TNT. Trailblazers Rockets. Um this game's on TNT because they I guess it was supposed to be Clippers Heat, but they moved it because of all the COVID stuff going on with Jimmy Butler and all that. So they removed Miami and put Trailblazers Rockets on TNT at 7.30. My projected line is Portland 3, total 226, and that is without C.J. McCollum, Robert Covington, and Yusuf Nurkic, and with Oladipo in the lineup for Houston. And the line is Rockets 4. I'm taking the Blazers plus 4 at minus 114 and plus 146 straight up. Damian Lillard can win that game by himself. 8 o'clock, Lakers, Pistons. My line is Lakers by projected 20. Total 220.5. And, and the Lakers are favorite 10. I'm going to lay the 10 with the Lakers. Clippers, Heat at 8 o'clock as well. My line is Clippers 5, total 220.5. Meanwhile, it's Miami 4.5. I'm taking the Clippers plus 4.5 and plus 160 straight up. The Clippers still have some good players playing for them, although Miami has some guys back and not Jimmy Butler. Warriors Suns on TNT, good game at 10 o'clock. My line is Phoenix, a half total to 23 and a half. Meanwhile, it's Phoenix, one half total, 229 and a half. I'm picking the over here 
Um, I think that this could be a shootout, and I think Stephen Curry and Stephen Booker can put on a good show for us tonight. Now we'll look ahead to the NHL as we will first go over the two games played from last night. Predators over the Blackhawks, 2-1 in a shootout. Nashville 4-3-0, no. Chicago 2-3-3. Three, three. The number three started game with 29 saves on 30 shots. Juicy Saros, number two started the game with a goal for the Predators. Nick Cousins in the number one started the game with an assist. And the shootout winner, Matt DeShane. Canucks over the Senators 5-1. Vancouver 4-5-0. Oh. Ottawa 1-5-1. The number three started the game with two goals, Tyler Mott. The number two started the game with a goal and assist, Elias Pettersson. And the number one started the game with two goals and assist, JT Miller. Bigger slate tonight at 7 o'clock. You have the Rangers and the Sabres again from Buffalo. The Rangers are minus 102. Buffalo is minus 116. Over under 6.5. Overs plus 110. Unders minus 130. Sabres puck line minus 1.5 is plus 240. Rangers plus 1.5 is minus 205. I'm going to take one more shot here at the Rangers. They have to win this game. Um, no, no fans or buts about it. They are 1-4. Last place in their division. So, I am going to take Rangers minus 102. Penguins, Bruins. Bruins minus 130. Penguins plus 110. Over under 5.5. Overs minus 120. Under is even money. Bruins puck line minus 1.5 is plus 220. Pens puck line plus 1.5 is minus 270. I am going to take over... Five and a half at minus one twenty. I think there's going to be more goal scoring in this game than there was the other night. Flyers Devils. Flyers minus one fifty eight. Devils plus one thirty four. Over under five and a half. Overs minus one thirty. Unders plus one ten. Flyers puck line minus one and a half is plus one seventy six. Devils puck, plus, pluck line is plus plus one and a half at minus two ten. I'm going to lay it with the Flyers minus one and a half at plus one seventy six. This is a team that looks like it's heading in the right direction. Devils, I think, were a little bit of an aberration. So. Give me Flyers minus one half is plus one seventy six. Islanders Capitals. Islanders are minus one forty two. Caps plus one twenty. Over under five and a half. Overs plus one fifteen. Unders minus one thirty five. Islanders puck line minus one and a half is plus two hundred five. Capitals plus one half is minus two fifty five. I'm going to take the over. I think there's gonna be more goal scoring in this game. So over five and a half is plus one fifteen. 4-2 game, empty netter can do it. You never know. Lightning Hurricanes. So the return of the Carolina Hurricanes tonight. Lightning minus 148. Carolina's plus 126. Over under 6.5. Overs plus 115. Unders minus 135. Lightning puck line minus 1.5 is plus 188. Carolina plus 1.5 is minus 225. I think Carolina's going to come out and play hard here. I'm going to take the Canes plus 126 straight up. Panthers Blue Jackets. The Panthers are um, even money underdogs. Columbus is minus 118. You're under 5.5. Columbus puck, puck line minus 1.5 is plus 240. Florida plus 1.5 is minus 295. I'm going to go with the over in this game. I think there's going to be some goal scoring in this game. Flames Canadians. Montreal's minus 126. Calgary's plus 108. Over under 5.5. Over is minus 130. Under is plus 110. Calgary plus one half is minus two seventy. Montreal minus one half is plus two twenty. I'm gonna go with the underdog Flames here plus one oh eight. I think they're due for a good game, and I think that Montreal is due for a loss. Eight o'clock, Kings Wild. The Wild are minus one sixty eight. The Kings are plus one forty two. Over under five and a half. Overs plus one ten. Unders minus one thirty. Kings plus one half is minus two oh five. Wild minus one half is plus one seventy two. I'm gonna take the under at minus one thirty. I know it's juiced. But I think this is going to be a low-scoring game. Red Wing Stars at 8.30. Dallas is minus 215. Detroit's plus 180. Over under 5.5. Overs plus 120. Unders minus 140. Detroit plus 1.5 is minus 164. Dallas minus 1.5 is plus 138. I'm going to go with Stars Puck Line. I'm going to try this again. Stars Puck Line minus 1.5 plus 138. I don't think Detroit's for real. And I like how Dallas has played this far. Sharks Avalanche at 9 o'clock. The Avs are minus 250. The Sharks are plus 205. Over under 6 and a half. Overs plus 110. Unders minus 130. Sharks plus 1 and a half is minus 132. Avs minus 1 and a half is plus 112. I'm going to take over 6 and a half at plus 110. I think that this is a layup. 
Ducks, Coyotes. The Ducks are plus 120. Coyotes, minus 142. Over on the 5.5 overs, plus 120. Unders, minus 140. Ducks, puck line, plus 1.5 is minus 250. Coyotes, plus 1.5. Or minus 1.5 is plus 205. I'm going to take the under at minus 140. I know it's juice, but I just like the under here. Blues, Golden Knights, great game. The Blues are plus 136. Vegas is minus 158. Over on their 5.5. Overs, minus 130. Unders, plus 110. Blues, plus 1.5 is minus 210. Vegas, minus 1.5 is plus 176. I'm going to go with the over here, minus 130. I think that this is a high-scoring affair. 10 o'clock, Maple Leafs, Oilers. The Maple Leafs are minus 136 favorites. Oilers are plus 116. Over on their 6.5. Uh, overs, minus 125. Unders, plus 105. Toronto plus 194 is the puck line, minus 1.5. And Oilers plus 1.5 is minus 235. I'm going to take another over, another juiced over here. I think it's a no-brainer. And last but not least, Senators, Canucks. The Canucks are minus 148. The Senators are plus 126, over under 6.5. Over minus 115, under minus 105. Sen- uh, Canucks minus 1.5 is plus 180. Senators plus 1.5 is minus 215. I'm going to go ballsy here and take... Canucks puck line, minus one and a half of plus 180. I like how Vancouver's played of late, and I don't think Ottawa's very good. Ottawa, I think, is one of the worst teams in hockey. So give me Vancouver, minus one and a half of plus 180. Now we'll do my NHL power rankings for the week. I'm going to try to be very quick here. And without further ado, here we go. Number 31 is the Detroit Red Wings. Um, they're, to me, just not very good. Um, they're off to a solid start for them, but not buying. 30, the Senators. I think that um, they're just not very good. Matt Murray hasn't been very good yet. 29, the New York Rangers. They've been the most disappointing team for me so far. You knew somebody was going to uh, be the uh, culprit of being a disappointment for being in that loaded division. But to me, the Rangers have just been disappointing. Their top offensive guys just have yet to produce. Their goalies have taken a step back. Number 28, the Chicago Blackhawks. They've been a pleasant surprise after losing their first two games. Number 27, the San Jose Sharks. Um, They can score with anybody, but I just don't think they can defend or keep the puck out of their net. Number 26, the Arizona Coyotes. Um. They have yet to get going. Darcy Kemper's kept them in some games. 25, the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, If they didn't have their COVID issue, they'd be higher. Number 24, the New Jersey Devils. They've been a pleasant surprise, but I'm not sold yet. 23, the Los Angeles Kings. Same thing. Pleasant surprise, not sold yet. 22, the Buffalo Sabres. Also been a big surprise this year. Um, Beating the Rangers, beating the Flyers. Number 22, or 21, the Minnesota Wild. Um... Minnesota's been pretty solid so far this year. 20, the Anaheim Ducks. They've been um, cashing some underdog money lines so far. 19, the Florida Panthers. Um, They've been solid. 18, the Calgary Flames. Um, They've been pretty good. But um, at the same time, disappointing. Only five points. Um, The more disappointing than good. But they've been good at times, I should say. 17, the Edmonton Oilers. Same thing. Pretty disappointing. 16, the New York Islanders, um, they've been disappointing offensively. They had that big win over the Rangers on opening night, but really haven't done much since then. 15, the Dallas Stars, they'd be, they'd be higher if not for their COVID issue. 14, the Columbus Blue Jackets, um, they've been awesome so far this season. 13, the Tampa Bay Lightning, they've just been themselves. Number 12, the Nashville Predators, um, They've been solid. Their goalies have played well. Number 11, the Vancouver Canucks. They've turned it around after a slow start. Number 10, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Their GM resigned. That was a stunner that came out of nowhere yesterday. That Jim Rutherford resigned due to personal reasons. Um, Hopefully everything's okay with him. And um, their intern GM has to go out there and uh, make a couple trades, in my opinion, to solidify themselves as a cup contender. But they, they're off to a good start so far this year. Number nine, the Philadelphia Flyers. A couple uh, stinkers, but they're back on the right track. Number eight, the Boston Bruins. They uh, almost blew that game in the Pittsburgh the other night, but pulled it out. Seven, the Avalanche. Um, 
They've been spotty, lost an opening night to the Blues, but they've poured it on on a couple teams already this year. Um, six to Winnipeg Jets, they pulled off the Patrick Laine, uh Pierre Luc Dubois deal. We'll see how that plays out. Number five, the Montreal Canadiens. They've been brilliant this year. Carrie Price has looked like Carrie Price. Number four, the St. Louis Blues. Um, they've got some big wins under their belt this year over Colorado and over Vegas. And they're a force to be reckoned with and can't be slept on. Number three, the Vegas Golden Knights. They have just been themselves, rocking and rolling. They had that tough loss against the Blues, but um, the Blues are very good in their own right. Number two, the Washington Capitals have yet to lose in regulation yet this year. They got that big win on national TV over the Islanders. They lost a couple tough ones to Pittsburgh on national TV, but um, the Caps are for real. I underestimated them this year. Number one, the Toronto Maple Leafs. They have the most points in the league. Their guys have just been marvelous this year. So there you have it, my power rankings for the week in the National Hockey League. All right, next up, I am going to talk about a coaching hire that um, we've been waiting for. And it comes to a big surprise to many as the Houston Texans have hired Ravens assistant coach David Coley as their new head coach. Um, David Coley, an assistant under Jim Harbaugh for a while. Um, at least he's coming from somebody that has a good reputation around the league and somebody that's had success in the league. He's been a big part of Jim Harbaugh's staff being an assistant the last couple of years. Um, this is similar to the Dan Campbell hire in Detroit where it made me scratch my head a little bit. But taking a solid assistant off a good coach's staff, like we saw with Dan Campbell in New Orleans with, uh, off of Sean Payton's staff, and now here we have David Culley off of John Harbaugh's staff in Baltimore. So um, we'll see about this. I think this is going to be the next Jaguars type of situation in the league where they're just going to blow it up and tank. I think that Deshaun Watson will be on another team next year. J.J. Watt will be on another team next year. So it's just unfortunate for David Coley that he's going to be in this situation. This kind of reminds me of Brian Flores a little bit when he went into Miami a couple years ago. But Brian, Brian Flores, as we found out, turned, to be, turned out to be a slam dunk hire. As year one, he overachieved with the Dolphins, went 5-11. and 11, And then this year, almost made the playoffs with Miami. So um, we'll see how this works out. And... Tim Kelly will remain as the offensive coordinator in Houston. So that is another piece of news that came down with this Texans coaching hire. But, yeah, I don't love this hire. I think it's a wait-and-see hire with the Texans. But, but, um, but yeah, they did the similar thing as Detroit, as going with a solid NFL coach's lead assistant. Now we'll recap yesterday's episode of the Masked Dancer, um, Super Six. It was a fun episode, to say the least. Um, the guest panelist was Whitney Cummings. First up, Cotton Candy. Um, the three big hints were five balloons, and practice three times. Her performance was the Great Balls of Fire, and instead of Word Up, they did Rapid Fire, where the the panelists asked questions. And they gave out answers. Um, this person referenced that they've been on ice before. Doesn't mean that they're an ice skater, but you never know. Um, tights. They've worn tights before. Not heels. And that they're physically fit. Because of the mannerisms and to me the big hint about the five balloons made me think of the final five in the 2016 Olympics. And that, my friends, Simone Biles. Everyone is saying gymnast, or I'm sorry, uh, ice skater, ice skater, ice skater. But no, I'm going to go with Simone Biles here. It could be Dick Gabby Douglas. Um, it could be um, ice skater Michelle Kwan. Um, Ashley Tisdale went with Tarek Lipinski. Ken Jung had the worst guest of the episode with Jennifer Lopez. 
Um, Wendy Cummings went with Chrissy Amaguchi and then said Gabby Butler. And Paula agrees with me on Simone Biles. Exotic Bird. Um, one of the hints was Legendary XOX Go. There was a brick house. There's a screen that said Rhythm Nation. Maybe there's a connection to Janet Jackson there. And there's a rose that, a rose tattoo. And this person performed the routine to Rush by Louis Capaldi. Um, they hinted out being in a music video, a campaign ad, a model, and they have a baby. And that baby could re- be referring to not just a baby, but it could be a baby dog. Maybe they refer to their significant other as their baby. I'm going to stick with my guest from last week and go with Shakira. She's done modeling. She has music videos. She's done campaigns. So I'm going to go with Shakira. Ashley Tisdale went with Kat Bundy. Whitney, he- um, I almost said Whitney Houston. Oops. Um, Whitney Cummings went with Vita Vonte- Vontez. Brian Austin Green went with Ashley Graham. And Ken Jung said Kate Upton. And then Ashley Tisdale went and FaceTimed there as Ken Jung was proven wrong. Next up was the sloth. Their hints were stepping out of a comfort zone, and their big hit was family and 18 stars. And one big hint that stood out to me in their performance was that there was a sign that said Yankee Street. And their performance was to Ain't That a Kick in the Head by Dean Martin. Um, their rapid-fire questions were... Um, Favorite animal, and they said elephant, or what would they dress up as other than a sloth? Not being easy in the costume, and then they said something about hard being away from family. Because of two big hints, or three big hints that stood out to me, or four. Family, this person has a family. This person, this is not their thing, stepping out of their comfort zone. 18 stars, this person played Major League Baseball for 18 years. And the obvious, Yankee Street. My guess, Derek Jeter. Yes, Derek Jeter is the sloth on The Masked Dancer. I don't really know, but I'm throwing it out there. Because the Yankee Street, 18 stars, he played baseball for 18 years. Um, or played Major League Baseball for 18 full seasons. Um, out of his comfort zone for sure. I'm going to go with Jeter. Um, Ken Jung went with Bradley Cooper. Brian Austin Green went with uh, Joancy Riley, and Ashley Tisdale went with Sasha Baron Cohen. Hammerhead, there was a Vegas, a Pasa Doble. New Jersey was the big hint. There was a red flag. Sunscreen. And they performed Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood, or Don't Let Me Be Understood. Um, he has a sense of humor, um, not a solo act, and then he had a public relationship. And those were the rapid-fire questions. And my guest for this, Mike Sorrentino. Um, Paul Rudd was someone I thought about as well. Ken Jung went with Paul E.D. Um, Paul Abdul suggested David Doper. And um, Vinny from Jersey Shore, she suggested. And then Brian Austin Green went with Mike Sorrentino, the situation, like I did. Tulip. Um, hinted about being on TikTok, um, not good enough, and had critics. And it hinted at a second annual mother-daughter dance. And then this person performed Thank You Next by Ariana Grande. And um, never thought about retirement was a question or an answer to a question. And then a pro dialoguer was a question. And she said, yes. My guess, again, Maddie Ziegler. It's, I think this is my, uh, the one I feel the best about. Um, she dances a lot like Maddie. Her mannerisms are a lot like Maddie's. Hints uh, lead up to Maddie dance, mother-daughter dance. They are on Dance Moms, her and her mother, Melissa, and her sister, Mackenzie, as well. Ken Jung went with Sarah Hyland. Brian Austin Green went with Simone Biles. Whitney Houston went with Julianne Huff. Zebra. There is an eat cracker, Grammy. And then there is a weight. A KO white t-shirt, knockout. And this person preferred Migente. And then the backup dancers had 99 shirts. What could that mean? Is that a score? Is that a number? It's Aaron Judge. No, I'm kidding. Um, all right. Um, the rapid fire. Um, 
They said he was at. He is acted. He's undefeated. Um. There's hints about. He hinted about a hook, and then there's music. He said it, he um. Uh. They've he's had recordings, but who knows if it's a that could mean music. That could mean any other voice recording. I'm sticking with Floyd Mayweather. There's too many boxing hints, weights, and knockouts. I'm sticking with my gut and going with Floyd. Whitney went with LL Cool J. Brian went with Oscar De La Hoya. And Paula went with Floyd Mayweather as well. And who ends up going home? The Hammerhead. Um, My final guess was the situation. Mike Sorrentino. Paula asked if he was a social media lover, and he said yes. And her final guess was David Dofer. Brian Austin Green's final question. Did you like to work out? And he said yes. His final guess was Mike Sorrentino, just like me. Whitney Cummings, his final question, if he's done a little bit of comedy, and he said yes. Our final guest, Paul E.D. Ken Jung's question, has he ever been to New Jersey? He said yes. His final guest, Paul E.D. Ashley Tisdale's question, is he taller than Ken Jung? He said yes, and she went with Kevin Hart, which I thought was a little bit ridiculous and over the top. And who was it? Jersey Shore star Vinny Guadagnino. Paula suggested him but didn't pull the trigger for her final guess. And what a backfire move to Paula Abdul by not going with Vinny. But it ends up being the Jersey Shore. I was on the right path, but I guessed the wrong guy. I said the situation, and it was Vinny instead, who was indeed the hammer head. All right, best bet of the day brought to you by... FanDuel, um, some tough ones that um, are lines today. But I'm going to go to college basketball for mine. This one just stood out because I just think that this team is just better than its opponent. And I'm going to light points. Tonight with Northern Colorado, four and a half against Northern Arizona at minus one hundred five. I just think that um, they're better than Northern Arizona. They're playing better than them, so I'm just going to take a shot and lay minus four and a half with Northern Colorado against Northern Arizona. All right, that's it for today's show. I'll be back tomorrow recapping the games in college basketball, NBA, and NHL from today. And looking ahead to tomorrow and the weekend's games. Um. Any other news that happens in the world of sports and pop culture, I'll have for you as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.